Hi everyone. In this section, we will see how to install R and R Studio in our system, and then we will do a quick crash course, which will help us to statistics required for this course. So the first step is we need to install R in our system. To do that, we go to www.r-project.org. So we type r-project. dot org. On this home page, we'll click on the download R button. Here we can see a lot of duplicate mirror links. You can select any of these. We'll select the first one only. My system is Windows based. Depending on your system's OS, you have to select the respective R installer. I'll download the Windows one. Here I have to install the base version. So since I'm installing it for the first time, I'll click on install R for the first time. And this is the link. By clicking it, I'll download the latest version of R. So the installer is downloaded. We'll open it. The default language will be English. Okay. Next, you can select the installation directory. I'll use the default one. All the four parts are okay. Click on next. We'll be using the default setup. So next, 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 and finish. I'll jump to the end of the installation. Click on finish. Now R is installed in our system. So let us run R. I'll use the 64-bit version. So this is the R console. Whatever commands you write in this console and you run, it will give you the output in the same window. However, we will not be using this console. We'll be using R Studio to do all our work. Just to show an example, if I write two plus five here, this is how you input a command, and that is how R gives you back the output. We'll not be using this. There are mainly two reasons for that. One is this window behaves differently for different OS. So if I'm working on Windows and you are working on Mac, we both may be looking at two different things. And secondly, whatever actions you take in this, so if you plot a graph, that graph will come out in a different window. If you run any analysis, the result of that analysis will come out in a different window, and it may become cumbersome to handle all these different windows. So there is a separate program called R Studio, which handles these problems very well. So let us install R Studio in our system now. We'll go to our web browser again and open rstudio.com. So R Studio is not the only interface available. There are others also which work over the R language and have different interface. But I personally prefer R Studio. Here we'll download R Studio. We need only the desktop version. So this first column. We we'll click the download button. Here, yes, select the installer basis your OS. I have Windows, so I'll select the first one. So once the installer is downloaded, run it. Click on next. This is the installation directory. I am using the default one. Next, next install. Remember that you have to install R first. Only then, if you install R Studio, it will work. Because R Studio will be using the same console which we saw when we ran R. Finish. Let us run R Studio now. So this is R Studio. You can see there are four windows in this front screen. 
the top left window is where we write the scripts if you are not able to see this window just go to the file click new file and there you will see a r script click on this you will get this window so this top left window is the script window here we will write the scripts we will run it on in the bottom left this is the console this is the same console which we saw when we ran r even here you can write the script and you can run it to get the output the output will be displayed in this window only it will not be displayed in the script window i'll explain the write to windows when we start working on r studio so let us look at some basic things first in the script window if you write again 2 plus 5 and you run it so to run a query you have to press control plus enter on a windows machine or command plus return on a mac machine you can see that command that we wrote in the script window is replicated in the console window and it is run and we get the result 7 the 7 is shown in the console window only many times we want to enter comments when we are writing the scripts so if you have done some programming in c c++ java you probably would know about comments to write comments in r we use a hashtag or a pound symbol so put hashtag and write anything in front of it when you select both these lines and run it only the first line will give you a output second line will not give you any output because that's a comment for those who are not from programming background or who are not familiar with comments comments are basically used to add information in your code so whenever someone else looks at that code knows about what you have written in that piece of code that part of the code which is commented will not be run that is when you run your whole code that will not have any impact on the output because it will not be executed even in r while doing analysis if you want to share your analysis with someone else it is advisable that you put comments before you start every different part of code you can see the font and the font size in which you are writing in the script window and it is displayed in the console window you can change this font and the theme of these windows you can go to tools and select global options in this window go to appearance and select the font size and the font that you would like to use you can also select a theme here so all these are options available set it as you like it to be and click on okay you can also give output in the console a textual output just like we used to do in programming language using print command write print within brackets and double quotation marks whatever message you write will come out as output remember the shortcut to run a command is control enter once you are done with your analysis you have to clear the console the variables that you have so the shortcuts for that is you press control plus l this will clear the console so you can see once you click control plus l the console is cleared out now let us learn how to create variables and assign values in those variables to create a variable we'll be using assignment operator so we'll write x and this is the assignment operator less than sign and a hyphen a dash and this is read as x gets say 2 and you run it 
so in the console window you can see this command is run on the right hand side you can see a variable called x is created and it has value 2 so this is the use of this window it will show all the variables all the data that you are using in your workspace to change the value in this variable you can again write x gets 3 you can see on the right the value in x has changed to 3 you can also use is equal to sign but that is not common practice whenever you are writing in r if you use is equal to sign it is frowned upon so it is advisable that you use the assignment operator which is less than sign and then a hyphen to print this variable in the console you can just write the name of this variable you can see the value stored in x is returned by the system if you want to enter multiple values within a single variable that is if your variable is an array of numbers to do that we will write y gets here we will be using the concatenation operator which is c c and within brackets we can enter as many values separated by commas so 1 2 3 4 5 we run this command you can see y variable is also created it is an array of numbers containing values from 1 to 5 instead of using this concatenation operator denoted by c if you have serial numbers only to do seriation there is another method y gets 1 to 10 so 1 you write colon and then 10 if you run this command now y has 10 values from 1 to 10 so to do seriation you can use 1 to 10 within a single command line you can do multiple assignments also if you want to assign same value to x and y you can write x gets y and y gets 1 to 10 so both of these will get the same values in the single command line if you are familiar with matrix mathematics or vector mathematics these two are arrays of same length if you want to find out the sum of these two arrays that is the first element of x added to first element of y then second element of x added to second element of y then third with third and so on till the last element you can simply do this by writing x plus y and if you run this command you get the output which is 2 4 6 8 goes up to 20 this is each element of each variable added to same element in the other variable you could have directly assigned this value to a different variable also so z gets x plus y so now there is a new variable called z which has these 10 values this was element wise addition you can do element wise multiplication also to do that we will write z2 gets x multiplied by y multiplication symbol is asterisk when we run this we can see z2 is having the multiplied values of x and y so the third element in z2 is 3 into 3 the last element is 10 into 10 one important thing to note is r is case sensitive when our small x is having value of 2 we can have capital X which can have a separate value so both these will be stored as different variables small x and capital X will be two different variables R is case sensitive it is important to remember this so you can store capital X as capital X gets 10 run it so you can see there are two variables one is small x one is capital X there is one function 
which will list all the values of your workspace. So we have small x, capital X, Y, Z and Z2. All these are the values in our workspace. If you want a list of all these values, we'll just write ls open and close a bracket and run it. So in the output, you can see this is the, these are all the values in the workspace. Now let us start cleaning up our windows again. To clear the console, we'll just press Ctrl L or click on this broom button on the top right corner of console window. Next, to delete one variable from the workspace, we'll write rm and within brackets we will write x so this will delete the capital x from the workspace you can see that is gone you can also write the word remove and then write z2 this will remove z2 both of these are doing the same thing to clear all the variables in the workspace we will write rm and in the bracket, we will use this ls function. So we'll write list is equal to ls, open close bracket. Run this command and this will delete all the variables from our workspace. So now let us learn how to install packages in R. First, what is a package? Packages in R is what libraries are in other programming languages. Packages is basically a collection of code that other people have written and that gives some additional functions to our program. The availability of numerous packages for R makes R one of the most powerful data science programming languages. For example, there is a package called ggplot. ggplot package is used to create different types of graphs, plots, charts for our data so that we can visualize our data in a better way. So let us learn how to install packages in R. You can also see that in the right bottom window, this window about which we have not talked about till now, there's a tab titled packages. You can see these are the inbuilt packages which are already installed with R. You can scroll down on the left of the name of these packages, there's a checkbox. All of these are unchecked, which means all these packages are installed, but they are not loaded. You cannot use them in your code. To use a package, you'll have to load it. To load it, you can just simply tick the checkbox. You can see a code is run in the console and that particular package has been loaded. Now you can use ggplot while writing the code. But these are only the inbuilt packages. You may want to install a package which is not inbuilt. I'm writing here some of the web URLs where you can see a whole list of packages available with R. So I've written here the three links if you browse these links in the first link you can find the packages are clubbed by their use case all the packages which help in plotting in graphing are put in one group for pre-processing the data all the packages available are clubbed and put in one group so the first link will give you packages clubbed into groups the second link will give you packages in their alphabetical order by their names so it will list all the packages in R by their names it's a huge list the third one is another website where people submit their packages which can be used by other people so it's a huge community you can find numerous packages there also to browse a URL through R window you can use browse URL command so we'll write browse URL so when we start typing browse, since it is an inbuilt command, R Studio prompts us the all the commands which start with browse. 
you can navigate using up and down key select the one that you want and press the tab key this will auto complete the rest of the command for you within this within these brackets we need to enter the url we'll first have double quotation marks we'll copy the url and paste it here and we'll run this command you can see that website is opened up in the default browser and here you can see the packages are clubbed topic wise so if you want ggplot it is in the graphics topic you can explore these on your own if you are interested in some particular package go ahead and install it so now let us learn how to install a package there are two ways one is the way provided by r studio it is you go to the tools in the menu bar within tools there is an option of install package here if you want to install package from the repository of cran you just write the name of the package here and it will install it it will download it from the cran repository and install it if you want to do it from some other website you can change the install from option here so this is one way i'll show you the second way and i suggest that we use this second way the second way is by using the script i'll click cancel here in the left script window we'll write a script to install package why i suggest this is because when you're sharing your code with someone else that someone else should also install the package which is required by your code if you have not written it in the script the other person will not come to know which package you have installed if you just go to tools and install a package it will not be part of the scripts so it is better that you write the code to install package in the script if you are only going to use the analysis then you can go ahead and use the tools option also so let us install a package which is available in the cran repository we'll write install dot packages within this bracket we need to give the name of the package and within double quotation marks we'll write lib linear lib linear is a package which is used to do linear regression analysis so we'll press control enter you can see the console was giving a warning because as i told you r is a case sensitive language and i entered capital l instead of small l so let's correct this and run it so it is automatically downloading from cran and once it is downloaded it has installed it here in the right window also you can see lib linear is available and the description is also written here linear predictive models can be built using this library now this package is installed again it is not loaded to see the list of all the installed packages we'll write library open and close up bracket so library is where all the packages are stored so when i run this command it will give the list of all the packages installed so you can see this is the list of packages installed and a small description you can close this tab and if you want to see the list of currently loaded packages we will write search open and close bracket if you run this search command this is the list of packages that are currently loaded and which you can use to load a package which is installed we'll use require keyword so we'll write the command require and we'll write lib linear within double quotation marks so let's go add double quotation marks 
so if you see earlier when we ran the search command lib linear was not available now if we run it again the second one is lib linear and is it is available you can also see in the right window lib linear now has a tick to remove you can simply untick the package or you can write detach d e t a c h within double quotation marks package colon lib linear comma unload is equal to true is equal to true control enter now you can see that tick is removed from lib linear now to uninstall this package we will use remove packages command so we will write remove dot packages within bracket we will write within double quotation marks the name of this package lib linear control enter and that package is removed you will not be able to find it in the user library to know more about any package you can type question mark and then write the name of the package so i write ggplot2 and i run this command you can see in the right window there is a help tab that help tab has all the documentation of standard packages commands everything whenever you want to know about any standard command or a package just type question mark command name or package name and you'll get all the information about it so this is how we install a package make it available by loading it uninstall it or make it unavailable by detaching it this is all about packages so now that we have learned how to install and remove packages let us learn about how to add data on which we want to perform our analysis there are three ways one is to use r's built in data sets other is you can enter data manually and store it in variables create data tables and the third option is you can import your data from a csv file or a text file let us look at the first option r has a built in package called the dataset package if you go to the packages option and scroll down you can find the dataset package in the system library here is the datasets package so it is installed we'll just click here to make it available if you want to look at the list of data sets that are part of this package you can just write data open and close bracket press control enter and you'll get a list of all the data sets that are part of this package with a small description in front of the name another way of doing the same thing is we can write library and within brackets we will write help is equal to double quotation marks data sets if you run this command you can see it is giving you the same list of all the data sets available in the package now in this list of packages you can see there is a data set called iris let us learn something about this data set so we'll go to our script window and we'll write question mark iris so as i told you this will tell us what that data set contains in the help section you can see the description of this data the format of this data the source etc iris is basically data of flowers and it contains data such as sepal length 
you can see here sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and the species so let us look at the structure of this data set to see the structure we will write str and within brackets we will write iris control enter so as i told you it has five variables sepal length width petal length width and species and it has 150 observations so basically it had it has 50 flowers of three species so that's why 150 observations and when you write str it is giving the structure of this data frame and it is telling you the column name column type and few observations of that column so whenever you get new data you should look at the structure of the data to know more about the data if you want to look at the data you just write iris and press enter iris press enter so you can see these are the 150 rows with five columns now if you want to load this data set into your workspace you need to write data within brackets iris control enter now you can see iris is part of the workspace now and you can use it for analysis now let us see how we can enter data manually we saw this earlier also when we learned how to assign value to variables let us revisit it if we want to assign values from 1 to 10 to a variable we can do it like this x1 gets 1 to 10 you can see x1 is a variable in the workspace now the second way of assigning value is using the concatenation operator so if you want to assign specific values to x2 we'll write x2 gets c and within bracket we can mention the values control enter x2 gets these values there is another function called sequence so if you want to assign a sequence to a variable say for example if you want to assign the multiples of 5 from 5 to 50 we'll do it like this x3 gets sequence the starting point which is 5 comma the last point which is 50 comma by is equal to 5 So you can see it's a sequence which starts with 5 it is incremented by 5 which we specified when we wrote by is equal to 5 and it goes up to 50 if you would, would have written minus 5 it would have gone in the other direction so 5 next number would be 0 next number would be minus 5 and so on there is another way to enter number in this way you will be entering number manually one by one for this the function is scan so if you write x4 gets scan open close bracket if you run this in the console you can see I'll make it bigger you can see one is written here whatever value you write here and then press enter will be added in this array you can continue doing this once you are once you have done press enter two times and that will be the end of input you will get x4 as 32 21 23 45 43 2 and 4 so this is manually entering values one by one these are the four ways we can input value into a variable manually now let's see 
how to import data from a csv file or a text file into our workspace i have two files with me one is a text file called product.txt and the other one is a csv file customer.csv if i open the text file we can see it contains data of products it has four columns and all the data in this file is separated by tabs so if you move from product id to category there is a tab in between so that is why this is called tab separated file text file and the delimiter for this file will be a tab delimiter is the symbol which is segregating one column of the data from another column of the data similarly i have a csv file also csv stands for comma separated values so the data in this file will be separated with commas if i open it in notepad we can see there is comma after customer id comma after customer name and so on so i want to import these two datas of customers and products into my workspace let us see how to do that we will write the variable name which is product gets read dot table bracket starts so within double quotation marks we need to give the file location so we will copy the location of this file from here go and paste it uh, we need to change these backslashes into forward slashes and after this we need to mention the name of the file which is product.txt with a capital p remember to put capital p since r is case sensitive after this we will mention whether our data has header or not so we'll write header is equal to true since this data has headers by header i mean that the column names are labeled after this we will add the separator so separator is given by sep this is the delimiter and in our case delimiter for the text file was tab so for tab we use this escape character and then write t escape is backslash then t so this command means that we have data in product.txt file which is placed at this location it has headers and the data is separated with tabs we'll close this bracket and run this command so you can see product is now in the workspace it has four variables and it has 1862 observations you can look at the structure of this data using str so we write str and within brackets we write product control enter so product is a data frame it has 1862 observations of four variables the four variables are product id category sub category and product name these are some of the initial values for this particular variable so now let us see how to import data from a csv file to do this we will write customer this is the name of the variable read dot csv so instead of read dot table for csv we write read dot csv then we give the file location which is same as the previous one so we'll just copy paste instead of product i'll write customer dot csv this file also has headers so header is equal to true and the separator is and the separator is default comma for a csv file so we'll close the bracket here and we'll run this command 
you can see customer is also a part of the workspace now customer has nine variables and 793 observations to look at this data we'll write customer and press control enter so you can see this is the data that we have this is the first column customer id then customer name segment age country city if you scroll down you can see the other columns also it is not giving us all the observations the observations are limited to 111 only to look at all the observations we will write view and within brackets we will write the variable name remember the v of view is also capital so now you can look at the whole data set if you go down you have all the 793 observations so this is how we import data from a text file or a csv file it is a very commonly used practice we often get data saved as a csv file for basic operations you can use the csv file in excel also do some basic operations on it well while you are collecting data you can collect the data and work on it in excel once you are ready with the data convert it into a csv file and then upload it into r to do further analysis now we have customer and product data loaded in our workspace let us look at the customer data once to do this we will run this command view customer you can see in the first column there is a unique customer id then there is customer name segment and so on and the last column is region this table lists down all the customers if you want to get the aggregate of customers in each region what this means is if you want to find out the number of customers belonging to each region we will create a table which will have regions and against each region it will have count of customers this is called creating the frequency distribution of a particular variable from this data we will find out the frequency of occurrence of each region so how many times south comes in this column how many times west comes in this column and so on so let us go and run a query to find out this frequency distribution for region variable to do this we will run y gets table and within this we will mention the data which is customer and after a dollar sign we'll mention the variable which is region you can note that we are navigating using the arrow keys and pressing tab to select the particular option if i run this command there will be a variable called y created here it is a table it has four values for the four different regions that we had in our data let us look at this y data once we'll just write y and press enter you can see it has four values each for four different regions central east south and west central comes 184 times east comes 220 times and south comes 134 times in our data if you want to look at in a proper table format you can use the view command view why if you run this you can look at it in a proper table format we'll go back once we have this data we can create bar plots on this bar plots are graphical representation of frequency distributions it will have 
colored bars the height of these bars will denote the value of that particular variable so when we have categorical variables that is we have categories such as central east south and west we can collect the frequencies into a frequency distribution this will give us the number of times that particular category is appearing in our data and that frequency distribution can then be plotted in the form of a bar plot let us create this bar plot and once this is created we'll discuss it further to create a bar plot on this data we'll just write bar plot and write y here control enter you can see in the right bottom window in this tab of plots we have a bar plot these four are the regions and this axis gives us the frequency so central is somewhere around 170 if you look at this which is confirmed by the data it is 184 if you look at the height of this table it is somewhere around 225 east is actually 220 so basically the height of the bar is giving you the frequency of of this particular category now there are certain parameters of this bar plot command we'll add them one by one so that you understand the importance of each of these parameters so these parameters basically are the properties of this bar plot that we have created parameters include the color of this bar plot the orientation the boundaries all those things so you can change these values so let us first arrange this bar plot in the order of these heights to do this we will write bar plot y square bracket order bracket y when we do control enter on this you can see this is order in the ascending order if you want to arrange it in descending order you just put a minus sign in front of y you can see that the plot is now in descending order the second parameter that we will discuss is to change the orientation of bar plot so currently the bars are standing vertically if you want to change the orientation to horizontal so that the bars are shown horizontally to do that we will write bar plot y within square brackets order with y comma h o r i z which is for horizontal is equal to true you run this command the bar plot is now horizontal next what we often like to do is change the color of this bar plot because this bar plot may not be looking very good and if you want to use this bar plot in your in your presentation or your in your research analysis you may want to change the appearance of this bar plot so we will change the color of this bar plot to change the color there is an additional parameter called color c o l you can also write color completely but c o l will also do and if you want all the bars to be of the same color you just write that particular color's name so you can write red within double quotation marks if you run this so you can see all the bar plots are now in red color if you want to give different colors to these different bars you can create a concatenation of different colors so we'll use the c function and within brackets we'll mention the four different colors red comma green comma blue comma blue comma beige close the bracket and run this you can see the colors have changed the bottom one is in red color then green then blue then beige if you want to look at the list of all the colors available with r you can just write colors open and close bracket 
in this console window you can see all the list of colors so it has a lot of colors apart from mentioning the name of this color you can also use this particular number so basically colors is a array of these values so if you mention colors and within square brackets you mention the number of this color also you will get the same color so these are all the colors available with you now if we want to remove this black boundary around each of these bars we'll add another parameter and that is called border is equal to na so we'll write border is equal to na control enter so you can see the outside border which was black in color that border is removed from all the bars now if you are going to use this chart in some presentation this chart should have a title to add a title to this bar plot you need to use the parameter called main so after border we'll add a parameter called main is equal to within double quotation marks we'll give the title of this chart so it is frequencies of so it is frequency of regions if you run this this chart now has a title if you have a longer title and you want to use the next line you can use this special character uh, this escape character with n which signifies that you want to use the next line so the first line will contain only frequency of and after that the next line will have regions so if you want to break the title into two lines use slash n and if you also want to label the x axis to label x axis there is a parameter called x lab so we'll copy paste this whole again and in the end we will add a parameter called x lab is equal to and within double quotation marks we'll give the number of customers so if you do control enter here number of customers is now in the is now the label of x axis so i think our bar plot is ready now we can use this bar plot in our presentation to use this bar plot we'll need to export this chart into the form of a image or a pdf there are two ways to export this graph into a image one is to write the command that if you run this command you will get an image in the location that you specify the other is a simpler one this comes with r studio only if you go in this block there is an export option within this if you click on save as image you can save this image give the image format the width height and the directory where you want to save it and if you click on save it will be saved as an image but this comes only with r studio i'll just show you the i'll just show you the command also if you are working on r and not r studio you will have to run this command to get the bar plot in image format so this is the code to generate png you will start with writing png after that that there is a parameter where you will give the location of file and the name of the file that you want to save it as then the width and then the height when you write this line a png saving device will start the bar plot you will draw after this line once this bar plot is drawn you will have to switch off the device so this this third line is also very important dev dot off this will switch off the device so in the second line we have written the whole syntax of bar plot 
whichever parameters you we discussed whichever we want to keep we do not want to keep we can have it here once we draw this bar plot here then we switch off the device we'll see that a png file is saved at the location that we have specified this is not required if you are working on r studio if you are using r studio better use this image save as image and save as pdf options now let us learn how to create a histogram in r histogram in r is created using a command hist hist let us look at the customer data once again in this data the age variable has numeric values if you want to see the distribution of this age variable for different age categories you want to first create the categories of this age and against each category you want to get the count of customers who belong to the that category histogram is the plot which gives us this value same as bar plot the height of the bars in a histogram will give us the frequency of age category coming in our data so let us create the histogram for this age variable we will write hist and within bracket i'll specify the variable so it belongs to customer data dollar and i'll select age if i run this command the histogram comes on the right bottom side it gives us the frequency of each category of age which r has created on its own it has created 11 buckets by default and assigned the frequency to each category now if you want to create different buckets so if you want only 5 buckets you can change this by using the parameter called breaks so within histogram we'll again mention customer dollar age comma breaks is equal to 5 so you can see this has now 6 bars we told it to have 5 bars so the number 5 that we gave it is a suggestive number it is not sure that r will create only 5 bars r can create more than 5 or less than 5 bars also so in our case it has created 6 bars but if you want around 5 bars you have to suggest it using the breaks parameter there are other ways of suggesting the categories so if you do not want it to start from 10 and have a width of 10 to 20 10 to 30 you can give the width of these categories to specify the widths we will write let us copy paste the command above and after breaks we will write c and within bracket we will write the values so we want it to be from 0 to 40 40 to 60 and 60 to 100 so basically i am categorizing my customers who belong to young middle aged and aged customers so these three categories will be created if i run this so now we have 0 to 40 40 to 60 60 to 100 notice that when we ran this command r has automatically taken the frequency density on the left hand side which means if you take out the area of this chart it will give you the frequency of customers belonging to each category we do not want it to be like this so we'll need another parameter which is for frequency and which we write as freq is equal to true so this will give us frequencies only now you can see most of the customers belong to 0 to 40 age group and least belong to 60 to 100 age group again as we discussed in bar plots you can change the color of this distribution also 
you can copy paste this line and we'll add the parameter of color which is col is equal to let's color it blue let's run this command you can see this now has blue color if you want to change the name of this chart you can use the main parameter so right now it has a heading which is histogram of customer dollar age that is the variable that we had we may not want this in our presentation so histogram of age if we run this the main heading is updated we can also change the x label for this histogram just in the same way we discussed for bar plots the parameter for this will be x lab we are not doing this you once this histogram is created you can export this into an image file or a pdf and use it in your presentation to do that there is this export option in r studio or you can revisit the bar plots lecture in that we told you the command to run to create a png file